In today's video, we are going to be using the interface from my Launch Torque Link. It does work as a J2534 programming device with many manufacturers. Today, we're going to use it on a Chevrolet. Uh, the common procedure on these Chevys is replacing the transmission. If it is a six speed or eight speed or 10 speed, they have a module built into the transmission that has to be programmed. So we're going to go to acdelcotds.com. If you don't have an account, you'll have to make an account. I have an account, so I'm going to log in. Scroll all the way down, accept the terms and conditions. You can read it if you want to, but that's up to you. Our current subscription status will pop up on the screen. I have a subscription to GDS2, and I have two available programming slots. So I can program two more vehicles. Uh, before I need to buy more VIN slots. We're going to add a VIN. It's going to take us to the next screen where we're going to click Launch Tech Line Connect. Now when you do this, hopefully it works. GM is uh, problematic at best, and each time you open it, it's going to check for updates. It doesn't always successfully update. So we're waiting, 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 and we get a message for some updates. So we got to wait for the updates to happen. And I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up for you. So you don't have to wait through this whole process. I got lucky on this one and I only had to do one update. Uh, There's a couple people on Facebook that were posting that they're Access did four updates today, and some of them couldn't even log in. So I feel like we're doing pretty good by one update and being able to get the software to open. Once it's open, we're going to connect to the vehicle. We're going to click that, and then it should pop up a screen to pick our G2534 communication device. We are going to pick the launch G2534, continue. Now this also happens quite often. seems like as soon as I get started and start clicking on something, it takes me back to this screen. We have to click on SPS2 to get back to where we were. Now this is a new transmission, so we're gonna go to replace and reprogram. Many of these vehicles don't allow used modules to be used. So if you put a used transmission in, you will likely fail programming it but some of them do go through just fine. This one's probably early enough that it would have went through fine. It's a 2012, but it's kind of hit or miss. Some of these vehicles will program the engine control module and the transmission control module in a sequential programming. It'll do one and then the other. That's because they both have to be at the same level of software to function properly. This one will let me pick the TCM by itself the software is double checking to make sure that I have current available VIN slots, making sure that I didn't go program another vehicle with a different laptop while on this screen. Um, it's a little bit smarter than that. So it, uh, it verifies that we still have a VIN slot available. So on this screen here, sometimes we'll have multiple options under these different tabs. So I just scroll through them real quick, make sure there's not multiple selections. And then over here, current calibration says unrecognized. That's normal whenever you do replace and reprogram. And that's because it doesn't really care what the calibration was before because it might be a calibration that was installed you know, on the assembly line and it doesn't really apply to this vehicle. Even if the calibration was the same number, sometimes it'll say, unrecognized calibration. The first thing that's going to happen is it's going to start downloading the file to the laptop and it's waiting. And then right now it says writing to the ECU. Currently it is connecting to the vehicle. Once it connects to the vehicle, then it'll start pumping in all the information into that control module and reprogramming it. Now, lately this screen here has been taking a little while. It doesn't matter which interface I use. Um, it kind of hangs up for about 30 seconds and then starts programming. And the estimated time remaining, it'll drop down fairly rapidly. Most of these vehicles take 
three to seven minutes to program the transmission. Um, so it definitely is not going to take 20 minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and speed up this screen anyways, so you guys don't have to wait the whole time. So we got a few seconds left here and then it should pop up with a calibration confirmation screen. Even though it's at 100%, it's probably doing a little bit of file cleanup. So here we go, we have the VIN number, TCM programming, it shows that it was complete. And I accidentally clicked on view right here. So I didn't mean to, but this will take us to view our VIN slot status. You can just click on later. Just know that it took one of your VIN slots. If you're doing this programming for a transmission that you just installed from a, uh, a rebuilding company, if you want to maintain your warranty, you may want to print out this confirmation and put it with your invoice, save it online, whatever you need to do to verify that you did the tasks that you needed to do to maintain your warranty. And then at this point, if you read the information here, it says if there are no controller specific instructions, turn off the ignition for 30 seconds to reset the controller. And that's it. We're done with this vehicle. At this point, um, you may have to hook up a different scan tool to perform additional functions. If it has a, a relearn that needs to be performed. Now these require a manual relearn, but sometimes you'll have to, you know, clear codes when you're done. So an additional scan tool may be required. Now, if you have a subscription to GDS2, then you also get a subscription to Tech2Win, which is a Tech2 emulator on your laptop. But it only works with certain interfaces, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's probably easier just to grab another scan tool unless you really need the Tech2. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments about the process, put those down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.